Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing on this wonderful Saturday morning? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's not bad out. It's uh, you know, a little chilly, windy, and raining, kind of. Um, the, temp the temperature here, for some reason, just dropped off. I mean, I, I think it was like 80, 85 yesterday. And, you know, <clears throat> out of nowhere, like within seconds, the temperature just went from like 85 to 55. I mean, it dropped quick and it got windy, so... But yeah, it looks like it's raining on and off. Um, so, you know, weather can't seem to really make up his mind. <laughs> it's very bipolar. <laughs> Welcome to Virginia weather, right? So today I want to talk to everybody about how to properly install a rubber seal. Um, torque converter seal, cam seal, crank seal, you know, all those seals, uh, rear main seal, <clears throat> all of those seals are the same, like uh, output shaft seals. All those seals are pretty much made the same way. So we're going to talk about how to properly install the seal and what to use on a seal um, when installing it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this. And uh, so hope, hopefully you guys can learn something from this. It's for a lot of people that don't know how to do this um, and that think they got an idea and um, really don't have an idea. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just just to say. We all had to start somewhere. We all got to learn. So this right here is going to be for the folks that do not know how to properly install a rubber seal. So here we go. All right. So we're going to start with. Let's see. Do, do, do. So torque converter seal, extra one I had laying around. So, <clears throat> all right. So this is this is a rubber seal. And that's what it looks like, of course, as everybody knows. Some of us do, some of us don't. Okay. That's the front part of the seal. This is the rear part of the seal, right? So, <clears throat> in here, if you look close, there's a spring. So, this spring actually holds tension on the actual portion that seals... Uh, a camshaft or a torque converter or whatever whatever that seal rides on this spring here holds tension on it now if you go to install one of these right say you go to install one of these and you don't get it quite straight you just kind of lay it up in the set you just kind of lay it up in the race where it's got to go and then you get to tapping on it and then it pops out on one side you can potentially knock this out right you could potentially knock that loose and not even know it and put the seal in and guess what now you got a leak because you think the seal is good but if your if your tension if your tension spring which is right there it's on the back of every seal this style seal like this it's on it's on the back of all of them um i've installed a million seals over the years <laughs> so but there's a that little spring right there is a tension spring so if you knock that tension spring off um, you're gonna have an issue now also when you go to pry a seal out or take a seal out and if you plan on reusing it um you got to be really careful and look at that seal really good before you decide to reuse it because if if this portion right here is damaged in any type of way shape form or fashion it's junk and or let me see i just seen that spot on this one it had a bad spot on the spring there it is if you got a bad spot like that on the spring see how the spring is uh you know see how the spring is deformed you don't want to reuse that because nine times out of ten you're going to have a leak if you if you if you reuse that seal like that and this seal right here um this is a used seal i just had it in that box but um <clears throat> but yeah this is a used seal but yeah you definitely want to inspect the seal before you go to reuse it even if it is new and it pops out on you or you're trying to get it in a certain way you have to pop it back out or you put it in wrong for some reason you pop it back out or you install it too deep and you have to pop it back out so always inspect your seal before you decide to reuse it or if before you install it always look at it it can come out of the box i mean i've had them come out of the pack and they had damage uh tension springs on them so you got to be really really careful with that um um so yeah man always want to inspect your seals and this is this is a very important area so 
you got this area this right here is what actually seals your shaft or your torque converter seal snout or whatever you 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 know, whatever the seal goes in um and then of course the spring so those are the two things that ensure that you don't have oil or transmission fluid all over the floor when you go to start your car up after you then done a timing belt you know done cam seals crank seal or pulled your transmission out and done a rear main seal or a transmission seal and uh yeah you, you have a mess um as a matter of fact uh, one of the guys in the feoa uh facebook group uh gloop i'm listening to me gloop <laughs> one of the guys in the facebook group actually had messaged me and i was talking to him through a torque converter seal and he actually installed his too deep so he had transmission fluid everywhere so look at so let's look at this real quick so we got it all right so as everybody knows this is a 40AT dash F transmission. Um, this is the automatic used in all your Ford Escorts from 91 all the way through 2000 and 2003, I think. Yeah, I want to say 03 was the last year for the Escort. Um, but yeah, they use these 40ATs in all those years. Um, pretty much the same transmission. Uh, this is for 1.9 LX 1.9 liter. So, uh, they use them in the 1.8, the 1.9, 2.0 SBI, and also the 2.0 ZTEC. So, very good transmission if it's well maintained. Um, as, as, as everybody knows, uh, my wife Jasmine, she has um, the same transmission in her daily driver, which is, has over 300,000 miles on it. And then she has the same transmission she's racing with is the same transmission. So, um, <clears throat> But yeah, so let me show you guys this real quick. So that right there oh, let's get this light straight so this right here is your torque converter seal right all right on install what you want to do is you want to try to get this seal in this race well this is a torque converter reactor that's what this is called so let's just yeah there's, so there's a race inside here right and this is where the seal sits so you want to try to get this seal in this race by hand as much as you can to get it to sit in place then you can start to install it um i usually use something with what's it's got a flat end on it i try not to use stuff with sharp ends or you know stuff like that because you can you know it may slip and you might go in and just for some sporadic reason catch that rower this catch this area here that actually seals the torque converter and rip it and then now you got to pull this seal back out again so you don't want to do that so <clears throat> like i said you just want to take something usually you know anything like sometimes i'll have like a broken um broken half inch extension or even a three eighths and i use that in right there you can use this in to tap this thing in it won't harm it at all now there's no need to take and drive it in here like you're trying to put a nail through five pieces of wood. There's no need to hit it like that because you will bend this thing. This thing, this seal is not made out of nothing a whole lot strong. It's, it's stiff and it's it's got it's very sturdy, but if you get the beating on it real hard, you'll end up bending this. It's a metal. There's a metal uh, cage back here behind all this rubber on the front. And you'll actually bend that cage. You'll you'll bend it. I mean, you'll bend it all the crap. You look in there; it's all coated in rubber. But if I was to scrape this rubber off, you could see there's a little metal, a little metal uh, cage in here, a little metal framing. So you'll end up smashing that down. And when you bend that, what you end up doing is you deform the seal, so it's no longer round anymore. So now it's got a hump here. So now to have a high spot or a low spot or whatever, and Instead of it grabbing right there, like you'll have fluid come out of that spot that you didn't bend it and you have uh, deformed it. So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to be as careful as you want to be with these seals, especially, man, when you're pulling a transmission out like this or, you know, when you got your cam seal, your cam sprockets off, cam sprocket off. You're doing like a timing belt, water pump, something like that, man. And you go to put the stuff back in. You think it's good. You crank it up. Now you got oil all over the floor. Now you got to turn around and redo that all over again. That is no fun. Trust me. I've been there a thousand times or more. Trust me. And, you know, 
messing with cars all my life is is one of those things that small things that we don't pay attention to that can cause big problems that has to then we have to turn around and do this all over again so just try to like i said try to remember when you install your seals man just you know lightly tap you know this area of the seal right here um you know some people use a seal installer i really I have a few seal installers, but you know, very rarely do I use them because I've been putting seals in for a long time, you know, 20 plus years, and I've always used, you know, like a bad, um, like a bad, uh, like a tore up extension, you know, three inch or three eighths or half inch extension. Um, you got a punch here, you know, you take that punch and do the same thing, just lightly tap it in, you know, as long as you have, you know, <clears throat> as long as it pretty much is the same size as that seal you can just you know tap it in lightly but remember start this by hand first start your seal by hand as much as you can get it wedged in there good before you start tapping it because like i was saying before earlier in this video if you tap this thing and it's not all the way in this race when you go to tap on it it'll pop out in another area which also could, like i say it could potentially pop that uh tension spring off and then you pop that tension spring off you're screwed so yeah, pretty much because when it when that tension ring comes off and you don't see it, if you don't know it, and you put and you install the torque this torque converter here and you can't see that that uh, tension spring has popped off, <laughs> you are not going to like the results when you put it back together. So <laughs> so yeah, man. So yeah, this that or just like I said, anything with a flat end, you know, that got a flat end, you know, this has a flat end, you know, and you know of course that has a flat end. So you can use seal installers too, but like I said, I just, um, <clears throat> I don't own one. So, um, I actually had made me one, but this is not, this is not it. Um, I, I got it at the house, I believe. So I was like, shit, I can't find it. I'll just use this as an example in the video. So, um, I hope you guys get the concept and I hope I didn't just crack that bell housing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, you know, anything flat, you know, try not to use nothing sharp like this and trying to tap this in because using something sharp like this like it could potentially slip off and cut the main part of the seal that you don't want to damage and or if you use the, a, a sharp object like this you're more prone to put a ding or dent in the seal and then you know it's imperfected so you don't want to you know you don't want to do that so so yeah so those are the things so those are some, those are some examples of some tools you can use um you know to install the seal if you guys have problems with that feel free to message me on facebook instagram TikTok, or uh face or, or youtube and i can help you i don't have no problem helping no one but so also so talking about that so when you get this seal started by hand and you got it to where you're you know actually tapping it in do not go past that point right there that's as far as you need to go with the seal. If you go back any farther than this, um, like one of the guys had did on FEOA, um, if you go back any further, it's going to leak. And the reason for that is, it is going to leak for the simple fact that now you have changed the position of this uh, portion here, which actually seals the torque converter. All right, so let's go over here. Let's see if I can catch this line with my light. All right, so if you guys can see that line, there's a line on here where that seal rides, okay? I'm going to point to it. See that line? That's where that seal rides at, right here. So when this torque converter goes in all the way, that's where that seal rides at. So you see how close that is to the edge of, this, uh, of the torque converter race? See how close to the edge it is? It's very close. You're talking about maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe, yeah, probably about a little less than a quarter of an inch. You know, you don't have much there. So if you install the torque converter seal in too far, guess what? That seal is never going to reach this, and it's going to be in about here now. You've changed that positioning for the seal from here to here. So now the torque converter is not even touching the seal, and when that fluid is going in and coming back out, it's going to spill transmission fluid everywhere. It's going to pump that fluid right out onto the floor. And you don't want that. Trust me. That, that's a mess. Transmission fluid and oil are a mess to clean up. 
and not only that it's a mess to see the fact that great now i gotta pull this back apart because i've done this incorrect <laughs> so i've been here you know tons of times man and i have i've just had been fortunate and had a lot of good old school guys mechanics to teach me and show me these things and i'm glad to be able to pass the knowledge on to those that don't know and heck man some of us that are experienced and best been messing with cars forever you know it's always little things you can pick up from certain people you know that's in the same car game that's in the car game like you are you know and and maybe something you'd be like, damn, all this time I thought this was actually this. Well, let me try it. And I've done it. You know, I've, I've done it. I ain't scared to admit. I don't oh, I don't know everything, you know. So I know, I know, you know, the the experience that I have that I have had the experience that I have had with a lot of things like this. Like um, it has worked out for me, you know, as far as um, installing certain you know what am i trying to say my tongue tied here so it has helped me out man when um i listen to the older guys and they tell me you know little tips and tricks and stuff like that about installing seals and stuff like that what to look for like burrs and stuff like that so um so you just want to be mindful man and just pay close attention to what you're doing and if you don't know don't hesitate to ask anyone because when you try to do something you think you got it and then you don't, you get frustrated, you get mad, you want to give up, you're like, the heck with this, I'm done. But the whole time it was your fault because you did not take the time to just reach out to somebody and say, hey man, I'm having trouble in this area, so can you help me out? But but yeah, I just wanted to, um, to show y'all, you know, this is the line right here that the torque converter rides on right here, okay? It rides right there. Um, and like I said, if you go past, if you go, if that seal goes in any further, you're going to change position of that seal and now the seal is here so this won't even be touching it anymore um so then you'll have like i said you'll have transmission fluid all over the floor so you don't want that so um and if you look let's see if i can do this real quick so this is this old seal you put it on there right and that line is right there so that's about where that seal sits when it's when the torque converter is always installed so you got space there all right now if you install this seal in too far that's where about it's going to sit at so that's why it will leak and also you have hold on yeah i get this light you have drain back holes um You have drain back holes right here. All right, so your drain back holes, these this, these are the holes that the fluid goes in from the tra from the torque converter after it's supplied fluid from this port here. So this is your supply port here, and this is your return this is your return hole for your trans fluid, and you got one there too. So you got two, you know. So you push that seal all the way in, and it's not touching. Guess what? When the, when the torque converter gets supplied with fluid and it comes back out, it's going to run out. It's going to run out everywhere, you know. So that's why you don't want to. This thing is pretty much flush with this race. So, you know, this is this is you know, that's where that's where you want it. And so usually when I get my seals close when I'm installing them and I'm tapping my seals in, I always hit them like this. So that way when I'm I hit them. And I kind of half it. I take half of the seal and then half of the race. So when I tap it in, and once it touches this race, I know the seal is in all the way. I do that on, on every side. You know, I try to make sure that thing is even on each side, you know, and I tap it. You know, I tap it here. I tap it here. I tap it here. And I tap it here. So what you, yeah, that's four corners. So when you're installing the seal, you want to tap four corners. One, two, three, four. And that way you, you're installing it evenly. So you'll go bottom, top, or top to bottom, however you want to do it. And then this side, and then this side. And then, you know, that will install the seal evenly. So, so yeah, man, just wanted to try to help a lot of people out with this. Because, you know, it's it's very important, you know, um, when you're installing these rubber seals, man. Because, you know, it's, it's little stuff you can miss, you know. And then it's leaking. And you're like, I don't understand. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. You know, and, you know, it, not, like I said, nine times out of ten, it's the mistake that we make um, 
installing this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, you know, it's just little stuff we miss. And as professionals, we make mistakes too. Like I said, I don't know everything. I was taught by some really good older fellas, you know, and um, they did a great job, you know, teaching me. I'm glad they took me under their wing. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a, it was a blessing for me to have that guidance, you know, coming up in the car world, working on cars, being a mechanic and stuff like that. So, so, uh, so I want to tell everybody though, when you run into a situation like that, man, and you install a seal and it's still leaking or something like that, the last thing you want to do is give up because when you give up, then you can't learn that way. Giving up is not learning. When you learn, if you have to take something apart two or three times before you get it right, and in this where and in this car, in this car thing, regardless of what kind of car you're into, whether it be a Ford Escort or Maserati, Lamborghini, Chevrolet, Ford, Dodge, don't matter. When you're messing with cars, period, sometimes you have to put in the back of your head, I might do this right the first time, I might get it right the first time, sometimes I might not get it right the first time, I might miss a step, you know, and then I might have to pull this back apart. I'll be honest with you, when I first built Jasmine's car, I probably pulled her transmission out, I can probably count on two hands about now, if not more, you know, and chasing behind a problem that I didn't know what was going on, and I had to get, you know, my transmission guy up in uh, Jersey, Pat. Me and Pat, he walked he walked through it with me, and I told him what I found when I pulled it down, and, you know, we worked it out, and I ended up finding out that I had two bad drums because it kept wiping the clutches out, like, every two or three passes. So, found that problem, fixed it, knock on wood, <laughs> we ain't had a problem since. So, it's one of those things, man, where you just cannot give up because, like I said, when you start giving up, then that means you're not going to learn anything. Um, you're not going to be able to show somebody else or teach somebody else, hey, look, don't do that because it costs me to do this two or three times. You need to do it this way. And then you got your occasional people that are hard-headed. They don't want to listen. <laughs> I run into a lot of that too, or you try to tell them something and they try to tell you after they ask you for advice. Um, they don't listen and then it fails and then they get mad and they're just like, I'm selling it, I'm parting it out, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Keep poking at it. Don't ever let nothing defeat you. And that is for people coming up in the car, in the car world, starting to work on their own cars and stuff. Do not give up. Ask as many questions as you need to. The only dumb questions are the ones that are not asked. And I tell people that all the time. And I was told that um, years back, you know, when I got into the car thing. Um, but, yeah, man, it's like, don't give up. Just keep just keep pushing. Keep working. You know, you can't, we can't build a car overnight. If you want a car to be, uh, you want a car to look a certain way, you want a car to be a certain speed, it's like night and day process. You got to keep working. Um, so, so guys don't give up. So that's why I'm making this video for y'all guys that don't understand about seals and installing seals and stuff like that. All right. So let's get back to this. That's enough of my, um, my speech. <laughs> so also, okay. Right. When we install these, now I was, I was, I was guilty of this myself. Okay. I learned this the hard way, right? Do not use wheel bearing grease, any grease of any kind. Reason for that is when you use grease on a seal upon installation, what happens is the grease gets on this rubber and one, so two things. One, the first thing is the seal can't seat. The seal won't be able to actually seat with grease on it. Two, um, when you put grease on a seal, depending on what kind of grease you use, if you don't do research on the grease, then nine times out of ten, the grease is going to be very harmful to this rubber. Um, it's going to be very harmful to this rubber. And you may put that seal in and be like, cool, you know, seal's good, you know, good to go. You know, nothing's leaking. Two, three months later, you got another leak in the same area that you had a leak before where you had to put the seals in. All right, so when you have that problem, then it's like, oh, what what did I do? Did something happen or, you know, is it leaking in another spot? 
then you pull it down and you look okay and the gate and guess what the grease looks just like it did when you put it on so it takes a lot it takes a very high temperature to actually melt that grease down because the Greek grease is really thick grease has chemicals in it like I said that can damage these seals and as much as I hate to say it, a lot of these rubber seals and stuff today are made in China. So y'all definitely got to be careful with that. I mean, 100%. Now, only thing you really need to install these seals, um, you can use WD-40. You can use, um, you can use motor oil, transmission fluid, stuff like that. Um, you know, just, just those light lubricants is all you need. Grease is, grease can cause more problems than... Um, you had to begin with, you know, that can cause more, that can cause more harm than hurt if you use grease. Um, and like I said, if it's depending on what kind of rubber you have, usually a lot of these rubber seals are made out of the same stuff. Um, unless you're ordering from a certain company that there's, their rubber is made out of something stronger and, and a different, you know, different type of rubber and stuff like that. Cause you have several different types of rubber. Um, and <clears throat> grease is like the last thing you want to do to use on any type of seal that has to seat around a raced area like this here. Um, and what happens is also almost like, it's almost like the grease can distort your seal area. And if it distorts your seal area and it cannot seat, guess what? Over time, it's going to end up leaking. Um, so, <clears throat> so you definitely want to be careful of that and be mindful of that, man. Um. So yeah, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're using the right lubricant to install your seal. You definitely don't want to install them dry because when you install them dry, then you can take a risk of tearing the rubber. Like I said, you can take a risk of also popping that, popping that tension spring off. So you, you don't want to do any of that. Um, you don't want to, um, you don't want any of that to happen, you know, up, uh, during your steel and seal installation, especially if it's your first time doing this. Um, that's the last thing you want to have happen is, you know, you have a problem with the seal after you didn't, excuse me, like, um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> last thing you want to do is have a problem with the seal. You know, when you just, when you first put them in, the first thing you're going to say is, well, these seals are cheap, man. You know, we know the seals are cheap. They're made in China. You know, they're not, you know, made out of like unobtainium strong rubber that like never wears out or nothing like that but you know yeah we do have to take into account this stuff is made in china but we also have to take into account that we have to make sure we install these parts correctly and we are using the correct chemicals to put on these parts um you know so if we're not using the correct install method then that's going to lead to a lot of problems and then we'll be pointing the finger at someone else when we were excuse me when we were the problem the whole entire time so um so yeah man so just i'm glad to get on here and uh finally have time to do this video because i've been telling everybody i was gonna do this and one of the guys was actually looking forward to this video <laughs> so but uh but yeah but like i say there's a little black line right here and that is where your seal rides and like i said again that's about where it sits at when it's in the transmission and when it's, once this goes inside the race and this goes i'm sorry when this this race goes inside this seal which <clears throat> which this seal actually sits in that race right there um that's where it's that's where it's seated at now if you take that seal and you drive it in farther you're going to cause this so now the torque converter is race is just kind of riding like that and now you got space between the seal and this race and it's going to leak fluid everywhere so so yeah man so just wanted to get on and kind of touch base on that and talk to everybody about uh, the proper way to install these seals because if you install them wrong you're going to find out real fast <laughs> you're going to find out real fast um and if and if you don't if you don't think so, just ask Trey Nichols. He'll tell you all about it. He had a great big puddle of transmission fluid under his car after he just got done installing his trans his torque converter seal. But you know, like I said, he installed it too far. It went back in too far, and um, you know, minor problem. You know, I know it's a lot of work to pull it out sometimes. Yeah, but 
you know, this is that's the mistakes we make sometimes, and we got to, you know, do it over again. Like, just like I said, I've had Jasmine's transmission out, I don't know how many times um, over the course of us racing the car and trying to get it right and trying to get the transmission to um, maintain its composure and all that stuff when, when, we, when we applied power to it. So... So, uh, so thanks everyone for tuning into this. And I was, like I said, I was glad to get on here to explain, you know, how to install the seal, what you use to install it with, as far as lubricants, you know, and tools, um, just have a flat surface that's wide enough and you know, make sure it's all, always wide enough to catch the seal, you know, you don't want nothing that you install in it and it's, and it's like on the edge or over here. Just try to get it right there. So when you tap on it, you know, it's a, you know, it's a even, it's an even blow. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> so yeah, man. Um, so I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm just glad to get on and, you know, show everybody how to do these, uh, torque converter seals. And like I said, cam seals are the same way. You know, you just, you know, you don't ever push no seal is supposed to go back the full entire depth of the race you always want it to face flush just like this right here you want it you want it to be flat and flush let me get this light you want it to be flush just like that you don't want to go past that point that's where it needs to be because like i said you see you see how close you see how close that black line is man it's hard to see it on this camera but you see how close uh, hold on, y'all gotta work with me. This light is messing with me. All right, you see how close that black line is right there? And like I said, you ain't got much before you go off the edge here. So definitely be careful, be mindful of that installing that these seals and on anything. Like I say, if you're doing cam seals, torque converter, crank seals, doesn't matter. Um, you know these seals <clears throat> have to sit in a certain spot on these races and whatever is keeping <clears throat> whatever it's sealing it has to do that too and always inspect always inspect the seal area the seal surface area always inspect that make sure it's not imperfected ripped torn any of that and then also inspect your springs make sure your springs are intact and they don't look imperfected like this right here that's a no-go i wouldn't trust that seal i wouldn't trust that seal for nothing I wouldn't even second guess that this would be going in the trash for real. And I just, the only reason why I saved this is because I'm glad I saved it actually is because I,